Welcome back. The lovely Nina Dadaboy joins us in studio to fill us in on all the latest in Hollywood and Denver. Nina? Hey there, Metro. Welcome back to Entertain Met. I'm Nina Dadaboy with your hottest celebrity news, scandals, and entertainment gossip. Last Monday featured what may have been the most controversial finale in Bachelor history. Everyone was pulling for Lindsay to whisk Ben away off to the wedding altar, but Courtney ended up being the one to sweep Ben off his feet. Earlier this week, Courtney took a stroll in California sporting her newest accessory, a custom three carat cushion cut Neil Lane ring worth about $85,000. Wow. We wish them all the best, but how long is this reality relationship really going to last? Now on to pop star Rihanna. She's had all of her eyebrows raised since her collaboration with Chris Brown on her song Birthday Cake. Rihanna finally broke her silence to Ryan Seacrest stating, I reached out to him about doing birthday cake because he was really the only person that it made sense to do the record with, just as a musician. Despite everything else, that was going to be the person. She is also hoping that there isn't a divide between her fans and Chris's fans. Yeah, we'll see if that happens. Oscar winning actress Charlize Theron is now a mommy. So where was her baby bump? Well, news broke that the single leading lady adopted a baby boy named Jackson. There are few details on Charlize's happy news, but her rep confirms that the starlet is proud to welcome her newest addition. Supermodel Elle McPherson brought the glitz and glam of fashion to primetime television this week with the premiere of Fashion Star. With celebrity mentors like Jessica Simpson, Nicole Richie, and John Varvatos, hopeful designers will fight to showcase their creations for fashion's biggest retailers like Macy's, H&M, and Saks Fifth Avenue. Although there was a lot of excitement surrounding the show's unique concept, some critics felt like it was just a lavish marketing, marketing ploy. You can decide for yourself Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on NBC. From one reality show to another, Simon Cowell is telling X Factor fans that they will have to wait and see whether Britney Spears will be a judge for next season's singing competition. Sources say the singer is holding out for a $20 million paycheck from the X Factor bosses, which, by the way, is almost 10 times what former judge Paula Abdul was paid. Let's wait and see if the X Factor really thinks Brit Brit is worth it. Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum are hot commodities, and lucky for us, we caught up with all the stars to ask them about their upcoming flick, 21 Jump Street. Check it out. You're ready for a lifetime of being badasses. Oh, I am. I thought this job would have more car chases than explosions. 21 Jump Street is full of action-packed scenes and unexpected comedy. I sat down with one of the film's stars, Ice Cube. How do you feel like branching out into this role where you're kind of more mean, you're more of the yelling type to try to, you know, get them in shape and stuff? You know, to me it was interesting to, to be able to take a character that you've seen a thousand times, but to make him unique and make him mine and make him memorable. From a serious captain to a not-so-serious teacher, funny man Rob Riggle shares what drew him to the script. I remember getting a really good feeling about it um, and meeting the guys and, and spending time with them and we were all cracking each other up. So were you able to improvise a lot with your character? There were definitely things that we improvised. Uh, and, you know, Jonah, uh, Jonah and the guys wrote a great script. And it wasn't just fun and games for the two leading actors, but fortunately for us, their infectious chemistry was present on screen as well. So I need to dress these outfits, right? So how did it feel like playing a cop, and did you do any of your own stunts? Well, no, we actually are cops. Like, we went to the actual This academy. is your, like, day job? Yeah. Yeah. We act on the side. Make sure to check out this Hollywood remake in theaters March 16th. I to design an hour and a half party. Mm. Really? That was kind of like what you wanted to feel like, you know, would people go see it. For the Met Report, I'm Annalisa Blanca. And it was a busy week for entertainment as Benjamin Smith was at the Stanley Hotel for the Feel the Energy Paranormal Convention. On March 9th, the Met Report went to the Stanley Hotel for the 2012 Feel the Energy Paranormal Investigators Convention. There was a special sneak preview for the movie Children of the Grave 2, followed by a paranormal house party hosted by Billy Tolley, otherwise known as DJ Inferno. Billy Tully, equipment specialist for the Ghost Adventures crew, told us how his experience as a club DJ in Las Vegas helped him segue into becoming an electronic voice phenomenon expert. I'm always doing remixes and I'm very familiar with software. And so when it came to reviewing 
um, recordings of voices and spirit voices and things, it actually came quite natural. Looking back over five years of experience, the ghost hunter describes some events that could only be described as paranormal. I've been touched, I've seen things, heard things with my own ears. I'm never here to disprove things, but I'm always here to give an honest assessment of what I think is going on. While Billy has over a decade of audio expertise, he reminded us that you don't have to be an expert to witness the extraordinary. I think the everyday person can do this. They just need uh, some very simple equipment. If I were to recommend anything to anybody, if you're able to open yourself up to the possibility that there are spirits around us all the time and that they will and can communicate with you, that anybody could possibly communicate with a spirit. But just before things got too scary, our weekend was over. For the Met Report, I'm Ben Smith. To check out Billy Tolley's full interview, make sure to visit MetReport.org. So Ben, it sounds like you had some fun up there this weekend. I had a great time and you know, to be honest, I couldn't think of a better location to hold this than the Stanley Hotel. It's definitely scary. <laughs> well stay with us because after the break, Paula Ruelas joins us for a special edition of Met Report Sports. We'll be right back. All night long and do it all again so I can find my way back home. The sun seems to shine a little less since you've been gone. You were the one I wanted. Don't stray, don't ever go away. I'll just smile and everyone will want to go with it. Oh. The Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference is one of the most historic college organizations in the United States. Founded in 1909, the RMAC has a membership of 14 colleges and universities, making it one of the largest conferences in the country. The RMAC is also one of the most successful. During the past decade, more than 30 RMAC teams have won national championships. The Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference, continuing the tradition of excellence. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Here on desk is Paula Ruelas. And Paula, a lot of Colorado teams made it to the NCAA tournament, but two of those teams are right here on campus. That is correct. It is a very exciting time to be a Roadrunner fan. You could say that there's a little bit of Colorado madness in the air. Golden was the location of the men's tournament, so the good news is they don't have to travel very far. The bad news is the men haven't had a lot of success playing in Lockridge Arena, but those games were against Mines and we started out play against Adams State. Adams was looking for revenge after an earlier season loss, but once again it was not the Grizzlies night. The two seniors on the team, Paul Brotherson and Reggie Evans, led the way for Metro with 29 and 19 points respectively. And what's a Metro game without a Reggie Evans slam? The runners take this game 79 to 74, setting up a matchup with St. Cloud State in the next round. That matchup was a bit more difficult as St. Cloud dominated the entire first half, shooting over 57%. But to counter the Huskies, Metro had Demetrius Miller, who, in his words, had to shut the run down. He scored a career-high 24 points and was able to lead the men to a Central Region Final. The first one for the school since Metro Hall of Famer Mike Dunlop was the coach back in 2005. After town downing two teams in the first and second round, the men turned their attention to the regional finals for a chance to advance to the Elite Eight. 
The men's basketball team headed to Golden this past Tuesday for the 2012 Central Region Championship, where the Roadrunners faced off against the Ore Diggers from the Colorado School of Mines. In the first half, senior guard Reggie Evans with the floater, who would go on to score a game-high 22 points. Six minutes into the first half, Mines makes a three-point attempt, misses, but Nico Mucci with the offensive rebound gives the Ore Diggers their first basket of the night. In the second half, Evans with the offensive rebound makes the layup and gives the fans the mile-high salute. The Ore Diggers would keep on fighting, but the Roadrunners prove to be too tough to beat as Jefferson hits the three and Metro gets the 73-64 win and will head to Highland Heights, Kentucky for the Elite Eight. I'm extremely proud of our guys. We just fought. There were some times this year where we had some adversity and people were scratching their heads on some of our losses, uh, but we never you know, doubted ourselves. We just kept coming. We got a resilient group. With the win, the men will play Montevallo out of Alabama for their Elite Eight game. If you're interested in going to the game, the athletic department will have a fan bus that will travel to Kentucky. Check out GoMetroState.com for more details. Now for our women's team who are back in the NCAA tournament for the second straight year. In 2011, they made a great run in the big dance and were one shot away from making it to the Final Four. But it's a new year for head coach Tanya Javi and the second-seeded Roadrunners. They took on seven-seeded Minnesota Duluth in Wayne, Nebraska. Metro in the first round of the Central Region of the NCAA Tournament. Senior center Kaylee Dow came up big versus Duluth. She hits the three-pointer to kick things off. In the second half, Dow scores seven early points to put Metro up by seven. Bulldogs' Courtney Desai gets the basket, gets the bucket off the glass to pull within three. But Metro's defense was too strong. They blocked a season-high 12 shots in the 58-47 win to advance and play Armac rival Fort Lewis College in the second round. Senior guard Jasmine Cervantes wasn't ready to go home just yet, and she scores a game-high 18 points and grabs eight rebounds. The runners took down the Skyhawks in a blowout. 60-42 is the final, and move on to the Central Region Championship in back-to-back -back years. Up next for the Roadrunners is the number one seeded and the number one team in the nation in Wayne State College. The Wildcats are the host team and this game took place on their home floor. The winner will move on to San Antonio for the Elite Eight and a chance at a national championship. Let's see if Metro can get it done. The Wayne State faithful packed Rice Auditorium to cheer for their Wildcats, and boy, did it help. Wayne jumps out to a 14-12 lead. Claire Duellius with the three-point shot. The Wildcats hit eight long balls in the game. Metro would claw their way back. Freshman Janessa Burke with the jumper. Wayne up 2015 at the half. Junior guard Emily Wood hits a couple shots to get the Roadrunners back to within three. But the Wildcats hit timely shot after timely shot. Their lead would get to as high as 18, and Metro's season would end in the Sweet 16. The final, Wayne wins 50 to 36. I think from our end, just came up a little bit short. Uh, couldn't be prouder of the team. You know, we gave a great defensive effort. Uh, just wasn't our night shooting-wise. I think some of their length, they're very, very long, and I think that bothered us. We hadn't seen a team like that. In studio now, we have Mr. Eric Lansy, media producer for Metro State Athletics and Met Report alum. So we just found out the women did not make it past the Sweet 16. What happened? Oh, it was a tough game. We got to congratulate the team, Tanya Javi and the group. Uh, two years in a row, NCAA tournament appearances after not even going uh, to the RMAC tournament years before. So doing a great job there. But against Wayne, they were too long. And they had such great length, especially on the perimeter. They had three pointers blocked. And Dow didn't have a great game inside uh, just because they're so big and they affect every shot that you put up. And of course, the fans being there, as you saw in that video, uh, just there to make things so exciting. Well, it's unfortunate, but the great news is the men right. made it to the Elite Eight. What were the strengths that carried them through the season to get them this far into the tournament? Such a wild season for the men, you know, starting off 12-0, and number one team in the nation. So they had the talent to go all the way, and then something happened. They lost to Mines. Obviously, Mines a very good team. They lose four or five, and then first round exit in the RMAC tournament. The thing I've been hearing since the beginning of the season is camaraderie, you know, gelling as a team early. You know, in the first couple of months before the season even started, they had team functions. They did community, you know, services and stuff together. And so I think that's really brought them together, especially amongst all that turmoil, losing the first round. They had a week off to think about it. They got together, took care of Mines. It was a great game. They started off quick, 13-0, despite the crowd, and are now moving on to uh, you know the Elite Eight, first time since 2005, as you mentioned, under head coach uh, Mike Dunlap. So very exciting time for men's basketball. Indeed, and of course, like you said, the camaraderie makes a huge difference. Chemistry is key, I think.
How has the fan support been at the games that you were at? You know, we are, are, this year has been a little bit better than others. I think John Kitzman, who's a new assistant SID, came in and has done a great job, but it's definitely not what you saw in the video with Wayne or at Colorado School of Mind, where they just packed the arena and getting, our, um, getting on our players on the court and whatnot. So it could be better. You know, we're working on it. We're a commuter campus. It's very tough. You know, the school has done a good job bringing dorms and campuses and stuff closer to campus so people can come right on in. It's free for students. They have giveaways and free food. So they're really trying to get them in there and hopefully, you know, this buzz with our team in the NCAA tournament really brings our fans out and more troves so we can, you know, get on our opponents like they do us. Well, where can students go to get more information on the schedules? Uh, GoMetroState.com is very great. You know, Met, Met Report does a great job. Uh, KMET Radio, all the media services do a really good job. GoMetroState.com is the main website where I put my videos on. Andy Schlichting, the SID, puts up the stories, schedules, player bios, getting really informed about the team. And not just basketball, but all our sports. And all our sports are very competitive. Joe McDermott, our athletic director, does a great job there. Well, hopefully we can rally up some fans, Absolutely. huh? Well, thank you so much for being Thanks here for today. Me. We appreciate it. And even though we've been talking about Division II basketball, the women's NCAA Final Four will be played at the Pepsi Center April 3rd at 6.30 p.m. Back to you guys at the desk. You know, our women's team had an awesome, awesome season, and it's a shame to see it's over. But I have to say, I'm really excited to see the men's tournament at the, at the Elite Eight in Kentucky. Well, and if we could bring that title home to Denver, it would be great. Go Roadrunners. And that's going to do it for this week's show. For Paula Ruelas, Nina Databoy, Benjamin Smith, and the whole Met Report staff, I'm Kelly Matzner, and we'll see you on campus.